Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. And today's focus is on pulmonary lecture number two, respiration rates, nursing interventions. For my sticky note found on Nursing Camp, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and social media. And I'm covering this sticky note found on Instagram and NursingCamp.com and let's get into it. So we're talking about respiratory rate. In my previous lecture, I talked about pulse oximetry. And pulse oximetry is oxygen saturation um, of the hemoglobin. And it's placed as a monitor that you put on a uh, finger. And we talked about the, the different factors that could affect that, called Triple H um, cards. And those are all factors that can affect our negative pulse oximetry. So always assess your patient first. And the reason I bring that up is because with Respiratory rate, it's the same thing. So whenever we have respiratory rate, um, we want to be assessing the patient. We just don't want to react to the um, to the numbers. All right? So always with numbers, they are important, but look at the patient first. So let's go through it. So normal respirations, now this is all over the place. I've seen anywhere, anywhere from 60 to 20, from 16 to 24. Now 16 to 24 is generally uh, normal. All right, we're going to consider that normal. And what I mean by normal is the patient should be, uh, level of consciousness should be okay, and they should be alert and oriented um, times three. Um, they shouldn't have uh, difficulty breathing, no shortness of breath, and uh, no orthopnea or anything like that. Okay, so let's get into low. Well, let's get into high first. So high first. So greater than 24. Well, the first thing is, is anytime you have a, a respiratory rate that is greater than 4, 24, there's a range, 25 to about 30. Now that's the boat coming. In the previous lecture, I talked about the boat. And the boat is problems. It's problems that you see happening before they become an acute situation. And an acute situation is um, you need to do something. You know, you need to call the healthcare provider. You need to stay with that patient. You don't leave that patient. But seeing the boat come in, seeing the problems come in, is 25 to 30. Because it doesn't make sense that a patient is has a high respiratory rate and is sitting in the bed. So you always want to say, if you have a patient that's anywhere from 25 to 30, why are they that high? Because we, we count respirations over one minute. And if they're greater than... 25 or the 28 what just happened so we assess the patient so we go into so whenever we have those respirations if they, if they come from a, a, a unlicensed personnel or a LPN um, as a nurse we reassess that patient and we check for the underlying cause were they just moving you know how do they look now you know are they in the high fowler's position you know and that's one of the interventions we might do if we see 25 to 29, okay? And um, is there oxygen? You know, are they on oxygen? Should they be on oxygen? In the NCLEX, um, if you have the opportunity to give oxygen, you have the order in the NCLEX. So every time there is a, you know, it says give oxygen, in the NCLEX question, you have the order, okay? Um, but we generally just don't wait, go right to medications. We assess the patient first. Because the nursing process states that you always assess before you implement. So what does the patient look like? All right, so the next thing is greater than 29. So we're going to go from 30 and up. Now with the NCLEX, you're not going to see on the 30s. You'll see 34, 35. And the reason is, is they truly want you to say, wait a second here. This is acute. This patient is working way too hard. You know, to be sitting in the bed, um, the boat's here. You know, it doesn't mean that if somebody is just walking and then they just went right back to bed, they're not going to be breathing 34. Remember, that's over one minute. So whenever you're assessing vital signs and respiratory rate, you remember that's one minute that that patient was in that condition. So that's an important concept. And so we always look at the underlying cause. So is the patient in the high follow? So we assess the patients. We're going to look at the vital signs. We're going to look at the pulse oximetry. And we're going to look at the O2 sats. Are they saturating? Is there saturations 
above 95%. If they are not, they are starting to decompensate and that becomes acute. So we really want to look at saturations as well as respiratory rate. And then what's the patient's history? You know, are they COPD patient? Are they uh, here with pneumonia? Are they CHF patients? You know, are they emphysema? Do they have lung cancer, pulmonary uh, uh, edema? Is it just anxiety? But generally 34 is not anxiety, okay? It's generally acute and the boat is here. Um, so let's talk about the next one. So less than 16. So we said normal was 16 to 24. Well, we, we'll go from 10 to 16 next. All right, well, this is an interesting number right here because a patient could be relaxing and they could be 14. So you always assess the patient first. So what does the patient look like? Assess them. What are their vital signs? What's their O2 saturations? Are they in the high fowler's position? Or are they sleeping? Okay. Did they receive morphine? Right. A medication that might have slowed down their respirations. So we always look at the patient first. We just don't react to the numbers. All right, once we go to 10, we start to worry. Okay. At 10, we start to worry, and less than 10 is always acute. All right. And think of this. 8 is intubated. So if you see a respiration rate around eight, you need to be bagging that patient. You know, they're not respirating enough to maintain O2 saturations. The boat is definitely here and it is gone. So you need to do something quick for a patient who's less than eight. You call the rapid response team, you call the, uh, uh, notify the provider, you help that patient breathe. You know, you might be BVM them. You're going to prepare for intubation. You're going to think CPR with patients less than 10. But always, always, always assess before you implement. So if you have a respiration, you still look at the patient. What does the patient look like? And if they are lethargic, obtunded, um, decreased level of consciousness, the boat is here. And you need to intubate or uh, do an intervention for that patient. Okay, so what's some other things to know about? Well, when we, when in NCLEX questions or in any kind of test questions, whenever you have respiratory rate, remember that it's an observable respiration for a period of one minute of time. So that's an important concept. So you have to understand over a period of one minute of time, if you have a patient who is you know breathing 34, that's too fast. They're going to start to get tired. So you're going to see a trend. So if you have a patient, your first assessment is 28, then you go in and then, you know, you know, 30 minutes later, they're 32. Well, they're only going to be 32 for so long. Then they're going to drop down and then they might be 16, 12, you know, and then eight. And that kind of means that they kind of crap out. They kind of get really, really tired. And that is definitely a doctor's call, calling the healthcare provider or your rapid response team and, um, intervening with that patient. So, quick review. Always assess your patients with respirations. Respiration rate um, is dependent on what the underlying condition of the patient and also you're always going to check vital signs. You make sure they're in the high follows position and you're going to check their vital signs. You're going to check their O2 saturations. What's the set status of the patient? What's their level of consciousness? What is their underlying cause? Do they have a lung problems? Do they have lung cancer? Um, is there any other history in the question? So we always just don't react to the, the respiratory rates. We assess. And when we get to less than 10, 8 is into bay, and we better be doing something at that time. All right, my name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and this is pulmonary lecture number two on respiratory rates. I'll see you next time. You can follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and social media. Nurse on.